Hey, how you doing? Alex here. Thanks for joining me in today's episode. We're going to be talking about the Division I transfer portal and the impacts it's having on high school baseball recruitment and college baseball, the impacts it's having there. We're going to be taking a look at all the numbers. If you are a data person, we're going to be going over a lot of data. The NCAA just put out some information on the transfer portal portal of guys that are moving, uh, players that are moving or not moving, and we're going to dive into all of that and that really that research that they have put out. I'm going to put up images here that we're going to take a look at it. I'm also going to link that article down uh, below, but this is going to give you a better insight of what is going on, and we're going to talk a little bit about the impacts of high school recruiting. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alex Swenson. I'm a former Division I college coach, scout, and a recruiter with 11 years of experience. And now what I do is help high school baseball players and their parents navigate this college recruiting process and put them in the best possible position to play at the next level to commit to a school that's going to be a good fit for them overall where they're going to get a good experience. I have a program that walks you guys step by step uh, through that where you'll work with me. And uh, if you get anything from this video, please smash that like button, the thumbs up right down here. If you're on YouTube or if you're on the podcast, please subscribe, write a review. Would love that. It helps me get this information more out to people to help families go through this recruiting process. So I get this question all of the time of what impacts is the transfer portal making on high school recruitment or you know i hear different things that uh, completely wiping out high school recruiting or it's not really affecting it that much it is making an impact but it's definitely not wiping out high school baseball recruitment they still need to bring guys in but man recruitment was already hard uh, enough getting to the next level about seven percent success rate of going through this for either division one division two or division three and it's making it definitely tougher because high school athletes are competing are with college uh, athletes if you will that are transferring and there's other schools that are utilizing the transfer portal more than others if you will in general where typically we're seeing the power five schools now that we have really a couple years into this uh, that the power five schools are bringing in more transfer portals uh, players than other divisions like division one mid-major if you will and lower division uh, one uh, schools and that kind of makes sense because bigger schools they need to win right now that coaching staff's gonna get let go and get fired so they need impact players and again they need to win right now so it is making a dent for other programs out there you know, if, if for an example, if we're before this, just in general, because it depends on a school by school basis, and there's so much uh, information out there, and schools do different things. But just in general, this is kind of what I'm seeing as well, as far as a transfer portal impacts for like the Division One mid majors. You're seeing 20 to 30 percent of guys coming in from a transfer portal, roughly. And of course, that's like rough numbers you could give or take, but pretty confident giving those uh, numbers uh, here. So for example, if a, a school was bringing in players, uh, 10 players, you know, somewhere it's, it can be, depends on the school, but 10 players on average before the transfer portal. And now with the transfer portal, they're bringing in, when I say 10 players, they were bringing in 10 high school players coming in. Now they're bringing seven or eight, okay, where they're filling that transfer portal, maybe two or three guys. And again, it can fluctuate uh, from there. But that's, so it's making definitely a dent and it's making it a little bit harder as, as we go. And we've always had a kind of JUCO. JUCO was like kind of the transfer portal uh, before the full transfer uh, portal. But uh, that is what we're seeing now where Division One guys going to other Division One schools, transferring from back and forth or D2s going up uh, to Division One or D3s even going up to Division One or D1 guys going down to get more uh, playing time. So I wanted to explain to that of uh, where we are. Uh, continue to be proactive in this recruiting process. As you, if you're new to my channel, this is so so important. If you're making sure you get good exposure and get your name out there and get on radars and being proactive in this recruiting process, because yeah, it's it's gotten a little bit tougher out there for high school baseball players. And if you're interested and need more help please visit my website or reach out to me and I'll be happy to talk to see if this is a good fit. So let's dive into some of the numbers. So how many Division I players entered the transfer portal last year for 2023? So 2,521 players. That is the number of NCAA Division I players that entered the transfer portal between August 1 of 2022 to July 31st, 2023. And we'll get the 23 to 24 numbers this next year uh, as we go. So 2,521, that is 
of the total number of Division One baseball players. That is a lot. That is a big percentage, which, man, the transfer portal, I have, I have different thoughts about it, honestly. It was like, it makes sense for some guys to transfer out, if, but it's also, I do not envy this at all uh if i was a high school player because it's or a college player when i was in college this wasn't really an option you could transfer but you would have to sit out a year so guys want to do that it's 25 percent of your career uh so you want to do that but now guys are coming in and out it's it's hard to to create a a foster relationships in a team environment and cultivate a culture uh, there. So it's really, really tough. Now, 49% of the 25 enrolled at a new NCAA school. So that could be Division One, Division Two, or Division Three. 44% of the 2,500 remain active in the portal. So they are they transferred to a non-NCAA school. They could have gone to a JUCO, okay, or they went to an NAI school, um, or they remain uncommitted or stop playing. Typically, we see this: the 44% are remain uncommitted, so they haven't found a home, or they're they're done playing there. So that's a big number. Seven percent of the 2,500 withdrew their names, and, and it's, we're kind of assuming at least NCAA is assuming they to stay at their original uh, school. So next up. Of the D1 players who transferred to other NCAA schools, 76% transferred to another Division I school, 22% transferred to a Division II school, and 3% transferred to a Division III school. Of the Division I players who transferred to other NCAA schools, 72% were undergraduate transfers, 28% percent were graduate transfers what are graduate transfers so they graduated they got their degree and they still have another year of eligibility so you have four years of active eligibility to go uh, through this so they might have redshirted one year and then uh, they finished out or they just accelerated they, they finished their degree in three years and they still have another a year of eligibility they could transfer out okay um, so that's where those numbers are coming from of players on athletic aid at their previous school, 41% remain active in the portal. Okay, remember active just means they haven't found a home yet um, there or they're out, they're, they're done. 42% transfer to another NCAA school and received athletic aid. 17% transfer to another NCAA school and did not receive athletic aid. Of players not on athletic aid at their previous school, 57% remain active active in the portal, 25% transferred to another NCAA school and received athletic aid, 18% transferred to another NCAA school and did not receive athletic aid. So these are the numbers of the transfer portal. If you want to dive in more to those, uh, there was a lot of data there. If you want to dive in, I'm again, I'm going to link that down below the NCAA and appreciate them giving that uh, data. Also got to give some credit to Ian McDonald, the head baseball coach over there at Indiana Westland University. He did a dive about this a couple years ago and it inspired me. I need to kind of redo this for the, the, the newer data out there, which is 23. Uh, so check them out too, Indiana Westland. Uh, man, there's a, they're an NAI program that went to the College World Series, and Ian over there is a stud of a guy, stud of a coach, and a really good program. But if you have any questions about anything transfer portal related or recruiting, please feel free to reach out to me, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.